man is made of. I've come through the fire, I've come through the rain. But God, He never left my side. He's my comfort through all the hurt and pain. I am so out. I am sold 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 out. My heart is fixed. My mind's made up. No room, no fixes. I'm all filled up. His spirit lives in me, and that's the reason. Nothing is better than you. 
there's nothing left. Our love seems to you. Oh, 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 there are no words. There's nothing left. Our love seems to you. Oh, 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 there are no words. There are no words. This is my story. There's nothing left. This is my song. Our love seems to Praising you. Praising my Savior all oh, the day. One look is enough 
One look is enough. One look is enough to change everything. With just one look. My life was yes. changed. My body was healed. My family restored. My life rescued with just one with just look. One look. My life, my life was changed. My life was changed. My life was changed with just one. With just one look. On Calvary, you looked at me. On Calvary, you looked at me. On Calvary, you looked at me with just one. With just one look. On Calvary, yes. you looked at me. On Calvary, yes. you looked at me. On Calvary. You looked at me with just one. With just one look. On Calvary, you looked at me. On Calvary, you looked at me. On Calvary, you looked at me with just one. With just one look. On Calvary, you looked at me. On Calvary, you looked at me. On Calvary. Be good to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 100. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 100. Hallelujah. Those that are here, those that are watching online, whether it be in a paper Bible or your phone, whatever you got, Psalm 100. Thank you, God. When they was there, give me a good amen. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Put a star beside verse 3. Verse 3 is going to tie us to our next passage. I know, or know ye, that the Lord, he is good. He is God. It is he that have made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen? Amen. All right, praise the Lord. We're going to go back left, just a short left to Psalm 23. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just a little skip, just around the corner to Psalm 23. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 100 is a psalm of praise and it ties with Psalm 23. Back a few pages. Thank you, thank you, Lord. If everyone's there, give me a good amen. amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Two stars beside verse 6. Surely, everybody say surely. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. Thank you for the anointing on your word and the power that's on your word. Thank you for the movement of the Holy Spirit in and through this service, dear Lord. Every song that has been sung through dance, dear Lord, through the reading of this word, Father, and the interpretation after, 
We need you today, God. And we thank you for who's assembled in this room and those that are watching online. That whatever you're doing here, you're doing there. And then with all our getting, we're going to get understanding of your word today. Thank you, Father, for your word being in season and on time. We need to know about your goodness. We need to know that you're always good. Lord, we give you all the honor and praise, Father, and ask for the ministry of the Holy Spirit to guide us to all truth. I ask that I decrease, that you may increase at this very moment. In Jesus' holy and matchless name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. We serve a good God. Amen. And when we think about the goodness of the Lord and, and the Lord is good, this, that particular word for, for good refers to kindness and to grace, to favor and to beauty. And so whenever you think about the Lord being good, you're saying the Lord is kind to us. When you say the Lord is good, the Lord is favorable to us. When you say the Lord is good, the Lord is gracious to us. Thank you, Lord. When the Lord is good, thank you, Lord. That Psalm, Ecclesiastes 3, and, and then verse 11 says, he's going to make everything beautiful in its time. Amen. He's beautiful. When we think about Eden, Eden means beautiful. And so when we think about the goodness of God, is that we can always count that, that there's going to be kindness, there's going to be grace, there's going to be favor, and things are going to be favorable on our behalf when we say that the Lord is good. And so Psalm 100 says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Everywhere you go, everybody should make a joyful noise. Amen? Amen? That means whether you can sing or not, whether you can lead a song or not, whether you can go high or low, whatever it is, you still ought to make some noise for Jesus. That's what he's saying? Wherever you go, make a joyful noise to be appreciative for what the Lord has done, that he's allowed you to see this next day. That he's allowed you to go on vacation. That he's allowed you to go into a new land, a new place. That he woke you up this morning. You ought to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. You ought to get up saying thank you. That this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thankful and appreciative that we're allowed to see another day. Amen. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. That means you're not supposed to come into the house of the Lord all, all stone-faced with your lip poked out and upset. He says when you come into the house of the Lord, you're supposed to come into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Serve the Lord with gladness. Thank you, Lord. Thank God you got a place to serve at. Thank God he's allowed you to serve. For many are called and few are chosen. Serving is not a chore. It's, it's, you do it out of gladness. I'm glad that I could do something for the Lord after all that he has done for me. I'm glad to come into the house of the Lord. Don't mind changing the light bulbs. Don't mind coming here and lock the doors and turning the heat. Don't mind serving God because all my life he's been serving me before I even knew that he was serving me. He was taking care of me before I could even recognize he was taking care of me. So when it's my time to serve I got no issue with serving because he's been serving me all the days of serving is not a chore oh it's not a chore glad to do something because I could have been anywhere else doing anything else the fact that I made it here today alive in 2021 it's because God has been good because when I say that he's been good when I've been bad when I say that he's been good, when I was making mistakes, he's been good. When I didn't even want to go to church, he was good. When I was out drinking, smoking, he was good. When I had no idea what to, what to do, when I didn't want to do it. Come on, when you think about how good God is, when you think about the car that you wrecked, how he took care of you in the accident, how he took care of you in the military, how he took care of you in the hospital, God has been good to you. After, after the relationships you were in, the good ones, the bad ones, the, the breakups, the makeups, God has been good to you. Does everybody hear what I'm saying to you? He's been good, and because he's good, serve the Lord with gladness. 
Be kind to other people because he's been kind to you. You got no problem serving somebody else. Be kind to the person that's homeless. Be kind to somebody that comes in and needs a meal. Be kind to somebody that comes into the giveaway center and wants some clothes. Be kind to pe- be kind to your neighbor. Be kind to the cousin or, or your loved ones, or your extended because you know the ones that you don't even talk to. Be kind to them anyway. When you think about how much he's been serving you, it doesn't doesn't even wrap around your mind yet until you get to glory and then you realize all the stuff that skipped over you, all the doors that he blocked for you, all the stuff that was coming your way that you had no idea was headed your way that he blocked. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And better still, better still, that's stuff that he blocked. How about the stuff that you know you should have gotten that he didn't give to you? That you notice, uh, turn to your neighbor and say, he ain't talking about you. He ain't talking about you. Because y'all looked at me funny as if I, well, well, maybe I am. Maybe I am talking about you this morning. Maybe you should have been punished, but God gave you grace. Maybe you were guilty, but he still showed you mercy. And that's how good he is that I didn't get what I deserved, and I don't deserve what I got. He's been good to me all along. He's better to me than I have been to myself. God is good. And because of that, I'll serve the Lord with gladness. Amen? Glad to serve no problem. Thank you, Lord. Glad to be doing something in the house of the Lord. Amen? David, you know what David also said? David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Means that, I was, means that he was thinking about it throughout the week, and when the day finally arrived and they were headed there, I was glad. I was glad waking up this morning that it's Sunday because when I come into Sunday, I know I'll be in the house of the Lord. I know the praise team's got a song for me. I know that something's going to happen in the house of the Lord. I'm going to see somebody I might have seen all week long that's going to give me a smile or an encouraging word because when I'm in here, I'm drama free when I'm in here. When I'm in here, I'm not worried about none of this other stuff. When I come into the house of the Lord, I don't have to worry about he say and she say. I don't have to worry about this pointing the finger at another person. I don't have to worry about that because when I come into the house of the Lord, we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise because he inhabits the praises of his people. When blessings go, when you think about the praise team singing songs, it makes the atmosphere conducive for God to come in and then dwell amongst his people. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Know that the Lord, he is God. Know when you're dealing with him that he is indeed God. Knowing that he has all your answers and he knows all things. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Amen? And his people and the sheep, underline sheep there, if you don't mind writing in your Bible, you can, you can underline it. Show me a Bible that's tore up and I'll show you a life that's not tore up. All right? You can, you can write in. You can write. It's all right. He's, when he says sheep there, underline sheep right there, we are the sheep of his pasture. Amen. That specific verse right there ties us back to 23 when he says we are, the, we are, we are not our own. The Bible tells us later on in, in the New Testament we have been bought with a price, a high price. That's why nobody should count you as cheap. When you know what he gave for you, nobody should play you cheap. And you should not cheapen yourself. Your standard ought to be high if you know the price was high. Please say amen to me right there. Yes? It means that nobody can walk over you. Nobody can treat you any type of way. That you, you're not your own, but you've been created and made by God and for God. We are the sheep of his pasture. It means that we are residing in a place where God wants us to be at. It means he has led us to where he wants us to be, and we are under his protection if we are in his pasture. Please, please say amen right there. If you are in the pasture of the Lord, that means he directed you to be there. And while you're there, while you're just laying there in green pastures, he's going to watch over you and protect you. When he leads you to green pastures, because everything that you need will be there once you get there. If he has led you, and we are the sheep. Everybody say we. 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 When he says we, he's referring to all of us. We we refers to no titles. Yes? Your title's no good in the pasture. Does everybody understand that? Do you understand your title's no good in heaven? He's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant, enter in. 
He's not going to say Reverend Green or Pastor Green when I go in. He's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Does everybody understand that? Because he levels the playing field when he says we are the sheep of his pasture. It means that we are all in this together. That we are all being protected and provided for by the same God. Thank you, God. It means that there's no racism in the pasture. Please say amen to me. If we know the shepherd is above us all and, he's, and we are one people in the pasture, it means that he's taking care of all of us. Amen? He's taking care of all of us. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise, for the Lord is good. Underline good right there. That's that word for kindness. For the Lord is kind to us. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endureth to all generations. His mercy is everlasting, means it does not stop. Lamentations 3 says that we got new mercies that we receive every morning. Yesterday's mercies were for yesterday. He's given us new mercies that we encounter each day. Does everybody understand that? That's how much he thinks about us. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. The reason why I shall not want is because we are the sheep of his pasture. And if he is the shepherd over the pasture and over the sheep, I don't have to worry about anything because the shepherd provides for the sheep. I shall not want means I'm not going to spend all my night worried about how it's going to get here. It means God's going to get it to me. If I'm supposed to have it, he's going to give it to me. If I don't have it, it means I don't need it. And whenever I ask in his name, he said it, he would give it to me. So all I got to do is lay, turn your name and say, just lay down, just lay down. Because he said, well, that's, you know, just lay down. Do you see, do you see any sheep running races? Don't be deep, y'all. Do you see any real fast sheep? Do you see any sheep that are jumping over hurdles or, or jumping over? Most of the time you see a fat sheep just laying out in the pasture somewhere, just laid up because they're not worried because the shepherd has led them to where he wants them. He has put them out in the pasture and they're not worried about wolves. They're not worried about snakes. They're not worried about any other adversary because as long as the shepherd is on watch, they don't have to watch. All they got to do is lay there in the pasture and be appreciative of the shepherd. All you got to do is be thankful. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. David recognizes that who God is to him is who he was to his people. That he was a shepherd over sheep, and then he became the shepherd over Judah and Israel, and he sees the Lord and how he saw himself. The Lord is over me. The Lord has always been my shepherd. For the reason why he took me out and put me in the pasture amongst the sheep to watch the sheep, he was teaching me leadership. He was teaching me also, he was teaching me stewardship. He was teaching me those things while I was out with the sheep. And then I recognized in my own life, he's been the leader over my life. The Lord has been my shepherd, is what David is saying there. He's a shepherd for me. But he's also recognizing at that point when he says the Lord is my shepherd, he's taking his crown off. He's taking his crown off. Because no other, no other king shall glory, have glory in the presence of our king. Amen. Did y'all see, did y'all read the book of Revelation, how the 24 elders took their, took their crowns off? Did you know there's bowling in heaven? They took their crowns off and they rolled them towards the seat of God. There's no reason to keep a crown on when you see him. Amen? So when he says, the Lord is my shepherd, he immediately says, I don't need a crown here, I'm just sheep. Being led by the shepherd. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures and leaves me beside still waters. The reason why he said he makes me to lie down in green pastures is because sometimes in, in my own flesh, I'm looking around, thinking that the grass may be greener somewhere else. And he makes me to lay down as the shepherd saying, don't worry that what you're looking at is not better than where I placed you. Then where I have you, I have everything that you need here while you're here. Does everybody understand? See, because in our own life, we're going to wander and we're going to wonder, I wish I had this or I wish I would have had that. And we've told you before, some, when you think the grass is greener on the other side, it might not even be grass. Yes? Did you know that most of the, most of the football fields that are around here are made with artificial turf? 
They look good. It's not the real thing. So when he said the grass may be greener on the other side, he saw you're looking at something that might not be the real thing. It means that you got to appreciate where you are and not worried about trying to keep up with the Joneses. Yes, the Joneses might be in debt. Yes, stop trying to buy stuff to impress people that don't even like you. Yes. See, you got to focus on where you are and appreciative where where you got. He said, he makes me to lie down. He, be still and know that God is good. Be still and see the salvation of the Lord. Be still. Stop worrying. Stop moving. Stop. Look, that's not, it's not to say that you can't have desires to want more. But he said, in the meantime, appreciate where you are. He makes me to lie down. He makes me to lie down. He's, he's a shepherd over me. And so sometimes I get antsy, and sometimes I want to move, or sometimes I want to get ahead of God. No, 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 he says lay down. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and he leadeth me beside still waters. Underline still right there, underline still right there, because we're going to get through the text real quick. Y'all underline still? Still waters, because sheep can drown in moving water. So he leads me beside still water so that I can drink the water and I won't, I won't become a casualty of the water. He puts everything at my pace. Please say amen. amen. Does everyone understand that he, he'll give to you what you need it at the pace that you need it? Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Glad he didn't give me a million dollars at 18. Please. One, is, there, is there anybody else going to say? Amen? Well, Pastor, I'd like to have a million dollars at 18. Well, I, I, don't know, I don't know what a million dollars would do to you at 18. He leads me beside still waters. He, he gives it to me at my pace. That's going to be helpful to me. Thank you, Lord. The sheep can go into the water, and because of the wool that's on them, and the water that gets in the wool will cause them to fall to their knees, and they can drown in ankle-deep water from the weight of the water in their wool. He leads me beside still waters. He, he gets me at the, pl- the pace that I need it. I can drink at the pace that I need it. The waters are still. Thank you, Lord. And it's also an indicator of no trouble. Right? Because we say still waters run deep. Thank you, Lord. There's, no, there's nothing troubling the water. It means there's a stillness, there's a calmness, there's a peace. There's a tranquility where he leads me. And so I can easily drink and not have to worry about what's around me. Did you notice there's nowhere there's mention of a wolf in Psalm 23? Are you with me? Verse, verse 4. Verse 4. I'm sorry, we had verse 3. He restores my soul. When he says he restores my soul, it's also a picture. If, if he's got to restore it, it means it wasn't always there. That means that somewhere along the way that I might have been good and I might have fell off, but then he restored. Amen? He restores my soul. Thank you, Lord. He's got a way of cleaning me up from the inside out like nobody else can. Thank you, God, that he restores my soul. That means I've fallen, I get back up. I fall, I get back up, and he restores. He's a, he's a carpenter, and he's in a, rest, he's in a restoration business. He knows how to, what to shape off. He knows how to shine things up, sand stuff off. He knows to cover me and protect what he's put in me, and then he'll present me faultless when it says in Jude that he's going to take care of me. He's going to restore my soul. Are y'all with me? He leadeth me to pass a righteousness for his name's sake. He's not doing it for me. He's doing it for himself. He's doing it for himself and also for others. So when they see your life and how God is leading your life and paths of righteousness, other people will see and then want to follow the path that you. Are y'all with me? Thank you, God. Yea, though I walk. Everybody say yea. Yes, I might walk through a valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, though, for he is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. It means that at some point in time, you're going to have to walk through some stuff. But you're not going to walk through by yourself. You, you're going to walk through some stuff, but you're not going to walk through by yourself. And when you walk through, you don't have to worry about being scared. Even though death may be looming, even though death might be all around, you're walking through it with no fear. 
Thank you, God. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. And we got to have our faith overcome our fear. And we just got to trust God that where he's leading me is in the, bath, in the best place. And where he's leading me, I'm still with him. We're in a shadowy time now. We hear about death tolls every day. So the shadow of death is looming all around us. This, there's, there's a virus that we had not encountered before. And so now we're worried about this virus and we don't know where it's at. We don't know who's got it. We don't. But I'll fear no evil because thou art with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. Every time you see a picture of, 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 of the pharaohs in Egypt, you'll see a rod and their staff that will cover their arms or cover their chest, rather. It's a picture of kings. It's a picture of royalty. When he says his rod and his staff, they cover me, he's also saying he's above Pharaoh. Look, Revelation 19 said he's the king of all kings. As when he returns, it's going to be written that he's the king of kings and lord of lords. When he's riding a horse and he comes back, he's letting you know that he's above every king that's in this earth. Amen. Below the earth and above the earth. Are you with me? So in his rod and his staff, they comfort me. They comfort me. I'm comforted to know that his rod and his staff will watch over me. Amen. Thank you, God. The shepherd's rod is meant to pull you back if you wander. It's meant to strike a wolf if the wolf comes by. But it's also meant to tap you if you get wild. There was an amen on the right. Yes? Thank you, God. Because the rod is also a picture of correction. Does everybody know in Proverbs it tells you that the rod was used for correction? Yes? Anybody got spanked when it was raised? It was when raised when it... Yeah, that's why you're in church right now. It's because you were corrected when you were young and you know better. And when you know better, you do better. Because when you realize that was for a purpose, it was to, it was to make you better. It was to, for you to learn respect and honor in the house of God. The Bible says who he corrects, who he chastens, he loves. Yes? Thank you, Lord. You correct them when they're young. Yes? So that you don't have to fight them when they're 16. No, no. I'm still getting stronger amens on the right than I am on. Maybe I ain't got a 16-year-old yet. Maybe that's what. Huh? But when you, when you realize it's meant to correct them when they're young. Yes? Thank you, God. Are y'all with me? Thank you, Lord. And I'm comforted to know that whatever his rod and his staff will take care of me. In whatever way it needs for me to take care of, he's going to take care of me. Because nobody can spank like God either. God's got a way of putting you back in line. God's got a way of making you apologize, say, I'm sorry, or I made a mistake, or I repent, Lord, forgive me. I'm... Yes, he does. Yes, he does. You won't sleep. You won't sleep until you fix that thing. If he look, because he'll he'll haunt you with it. He'll keep reminding you of what you need to do. And you think you'll be able to go to bed, but it'll stay on your mind until you make that thing right. Yes? Thou preparest a table before me. Oh, so that's where you were leading me. So that's where you were leading me. That's why, you, that's why he removed me from the pasture that I was laid at, from the still water that I was drinking from. He put me on this path, and the path led me directly through a valley that was... F and in verse 5, you realize where he was taking you. Oh, the table's in the valley. That's where you were leading me. Thank you, God. That's why you were comforting me, though, though death was all the way around me. That's why you were letting me know. That's why you were encouraging me to know to keep walking. That's why when things were difficult, when you thought about quitting, he still kept pushing you. Because there's greater on the other side of this. Beyond the trial, beyond this present moment that you're dealing with, I got better in store for you. And as long as you keep getting up, as long as you keep putting one foot in front of the other, as long as you keep walking, you'll realize what I'm leading you to, what I'm going to take you to, that I got something greater in store. What you lost does not compare to what I'm about to bring to you. I, I caused you to move away from some stuff. I caused you to move away from some people. I caused you to move away from some things because I was leading you towards greater. That's why he moved you away from where he moved you from because he had better in store for you. That's why after a while, you stop crying. That's why after a while, you stop worrying. That's why after a while, you stop complaining because you started realizing he's leading me somewhere. Thank you, God. And then once you see what he has prepared for you,
Once you realize that this was the reason why I went through all the aches and pains. This was the reason why I was lied about. This was the reason why I was talked about. This was the reason why I was disrespected. This was the reason why they walked out of my life. This was the reason why they closed their doors on me. This was the reason because there was a table set before me in the presence. Oh, you in the right place. Oh, you in the right place. Have you read Psalm 23 in a while? How he made sure that your enemies stayed around you so they could see how blessed you are. Oh, you better hear what I'm saying to you. Those same people that talked about you now have to acknowledge, oh, that child blessed. The same people that say you couldn't make it might need their hand out and say, can I get a little something, something? Because I realize God doing something in your life that he's not doing in mine. Did you know he, he says that the last shall be first and the first shall be last? That the same people that talked about you are going to need you? The same people that said you weren't anointed going to need you to pray for them? The same people that said you can never help them, all of a sudden they can't drive nowhere and you're the only person left with a car that can come pick them up with your kind, saved self. You still went by there anyway and looked... He was leading me somewhere. The table was not on the mountainside. The table was in the valley. The table was in the middle of the situation that I thought I could not handle. There was a blessing hidden. Oh, I'm talking to somebody in here. There's there's something that God has got hidden in the midst of everything. Why would he walk you through it? Look how good God is. Look how good God is that there's a table in the valley and everything that you need is at the table. Let's read verse 5. Let's read verse 5 so we can shout about verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thank you, God. I think right there, verse 5, he's also flashing back in verse 5 because verse 100 ties us to 23, but I think he's flashing back to his own house in verse 5. Because sometimes your enemy sometimes can be family members. Sometimes they don't believe what you believe. Sometimes they doubt who you really are in God. And can only see you as little brother or little sister or, or this little person. They, they, can't, they, can't, they can't acknowledge that God is doing something in your life that he's not doing in theirs. I believe that verse 5, David is also flashing back. He's flashing back right there. He said, the Lord prepares a table in the presence of my enemies because David is reminded when he was anointed. Are y'all with me? Can we go a little deeper before we go home? David was reminded when he was anointed. When he was anointed, he was out in the field with the sheep and there was a party going on at his house. The prophet had came by his house to anoint the next king. And they were having a celebration in his house and everybody else was trying to get the oil that was intended for David. Please, Come on, I'm talking to y'all in here. Tony your neighbor say, what God has for me. It is for me. Come on, if you're online, put that in the comments too. Say it again, what God has for me. It is for me. They were having a party at his own house and he wasn't even invited. They were having a celebration there. The prophet that came by the house on a, on a mandate from the Lord to anoint the next king. And everybody was trying to get the oil that was intended for David. But the Bible said the oil would not run out. When, when the prophet looked at the next one and said, this got to be the one. And the Lord said, no, no, no. You're looking at the outward appearance. You're looking at God does things by the heart. He said, you got to be somebody else. And they went through all the brothers in the house and none of the brothers could get the oil Because the Bible said the oil stayed, it could not be poured out. It was meant for David. And the prophet all of a sudden got an idea. He said, maybe there's one left. Is there anybody left in your house? Do you have another son? He said, there's David out there amongst the sheep. And when David comes home, there's a table prepared in the presence of his enemies. And he anoints. You better and he anoints his hand with oil and his cup runs over and goodness and mercy follows him all the days of his life. (laughs) 
And if we understand this, if we understand what's really going on, he's not really leading us to the table to celebrate the table. He's really leading us to the oil so we can celebrate about the oil. Because we anoint our head with oil. After that, the Bible says goodness. Please say it. Did we have that underlined? Praise God. Goodness and mercy are going to follow you. Kindness is going to follow you. Grace is going to follow you. And why does he say it that way? Why does the Bible articulate that way? If the shepherd is leading us, why do I need something behind me then? It's because he's going to protect your future. That's why he's leading you. But he's also saying goodness and mercy are going to follow you. Means that you don't have to be haunted by your past anymore or past failures or past mistakes. Because he's got your front and he's got your back. Whatever you go, he's going to take care of you. Oh, you better hear what I'm saying to you. Goodness and mercy are going to follow you all the days of your life. And the shepherd is in front of you. So who really can come against you when you got that type of protection? If you got that type of protection. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Runneth over. The table was set. It means the stage was set. The atmosphere was set for him to come in after being out with the sheep. The rest of them, oh, you better read that when you get a chance. The rest of them had an opportunity to clean themselves up. The Bible said the prophet told, told Jesse and his sons to sanctify yourselves and consecrate yourselves against this evening. They had a chance to clean themselves up. They had a chance to shave and put on new garments. And David is out with the sheep. And when he comes in, he comes in smelling like sheep. He comes in dirty and sweaty. That's the one, though. That's the one I'm using, though. He don't look like the rest of them, but he might be the best of them. He don't sound like them, but that's the one I'm going to use. He don't even smell like them, look like them. Regardless of the dirt that's on him, I see grace in him. I see leadership in him. I see that's, why, that's the picture of the prodigal son when the father's out on the sheep, when he's looking out to see the son coming back. He didn't have to wash himself because the love of the father will cover the dirt of the son. Are y'all with me? Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Thank you, Lord. Means that He just covered me with the oil. Let's close right here, but let me let me let me give you understanding about the oil as we leave. Shepherds would anoint the sheep with oil over their eyes and over their ears. Oh, around their mouths, any places where insects or anything would come in to try and harm them. Wherever there was a gateway to that sheep, whatever could come in and cause damage, they put oil on it. Oil would keep the insects away. Oil would keep the snakes away. Oil would keep all these, are oh, y'all with me? We said the shepherd would anoint, with, when he anoints my head with oil, the shepherd would anoint sheep also if the sheep was lost. Thank you, God. All we can do is follow that trail the smell of the oil that's on them. Thank you, God. He has a way of tracking his and also keeping his. He marks them with the oil. Turn to the neighbor and say, you're marked. You're marked. Turn it again and say, you're marked. You're marked. You're marked. That's why you keep surviving stuff. That's why you keep surviving stuff. That's why you keep walking away from stuff that was meant to take you out. You're marked. Thank you, Lord. There's oil on you. There's oil on you. There's an oil on your life. There's a grace on your life. Thank you, Lord. And we anoint my heads with oil, and our cup runs over. It means there's something that we're supposed to do. The oil is also a picture that we've been empowered to do something. Exodus tells us whenever somebody was consecrated or moved to the office of priesthood, they had to be anointed with oil. They had to be anointed with oil. And when he said he anoints my head with oil, all of us in here, we've all been anointed to do something. We all are empowered to do something for the kingdom of God. Are y'all with me? Thank you, Lord. Everybody say surely. Surely, surely goodness and mercy. 
shall follow me all the days of my life. Everybody say, and. And, and I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, God. When you realize all that he's doing for you, and then when Sunday comes along, you better stop playing hooky then. Oh, you thought I was, you thought I was going to let you get out of here without trying to step on your toe a little bit. Huh? When you realize everything that he's provided for you and will provide for you, and all you got to do is give him an hour and a half on a Sunday to get into his house, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Goodness and mercy. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen? Amen. 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 Everybody stand to your feet if you can. We've kept you long. But it's Sunday, though. Amen. It's Sunday, though. Amen? Amen. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, would you come forward at this moment? If you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, he, he wants to be your shepherd. If you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, he wants to lead you. Thank you, Lord. It means that you don't have to worry about being led by yourself. You don't have to worry about being led by others. You can be led by the Lord. He will, he will order your steps. He'll let you know what you need to do. He'll order your steps. Thank you, Lord. There is, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. There is no heaven for you except through Jesus Christ. No heaven for you except through Jesus. You can be kind to many people and still miss the mark. It still must be done through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Thank you, Lord. John, you know, John 10 tells us three times in there that he's the good shepherd. Lays his life down for the sheep. That same passage in John 10, he also says, I'm the door. All others before me were thieves and robbers. Thank you, Lord. The only way that you get into glory is through Jesus Christ. There is no purgatory. There is no other way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. The Pope can bless you, but can't save you. There is no other way except through Jesus Christ. Are y'all with me? Thank you, God. At this moment, if you've not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, would you come forward now to secure your spot in glory so that your name can be written in the Lamb's Book of Life? We need to speak about that at some point.